Grade tens. Today we are doing one page of notes. One page in your booklets. It's going to be like seven or eight slides for me to go through, but it's only one page. So that is the good news. Uh, I mean, I said that like there's going to be bad news. There's no bad news. It's Friday. Uh, we're talking about investigating velocity and distance. So just a reminder that if you're uh, just kind of joining now for our physics topic, we are into a new unit. We're doing physics now, so if you can, you should print out the booklet. If you can't, that's okay. You can just follow along on loose leaf, okay? So uh, just make sure you know where the booklet is. Maybe save it onto your Chromebook so then uh, when you're um, like studying for quizzes and stuff like that or, you know, doing the practice problems, you can still reference that. Anyways. Uh, let's get started. So we're talking about investigating velocity and distance today. Why is my presentation? Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. I've got this in the wrong spot. Uh, just hang tight for one second here. Okay. Present. We are going to present that window. Oh my goodness. All right. A window. There we go. Okay, off to a good start here. All right, so investigating velocity and distance. Um, what is an investigation of a velocity and distance going to look like? So we're going to talk about how they're related to one another and uh, just some properties of them. And then we're going to finish it off by doing a little uh, activity or a little, like, you know, something for you to try it on your own, which is converting something we call prefixes. We will get. So how fast is fast? Consider yourself to be in motion. Just use your imagination. So you are in motion. So maybe you're in a car, maybe you're on a roller coaster, maybe you're on roller blades, maybe you're on a bike, maybe you're running, okay? Uh, maybe you're on a train almost going the speed of light, all right? Uh, it can be literally anything. Um, what are some clues that let you know how fast you're moving? So try to think about that. What are some clues? Is it how fast things are passing by you? Uh, what else do you think of? Now, there's one really, really specific way to be able to tell us how fast we're moving, and that's something called a speedometer. If we're in a car, uh, we'll have a speedometer uh, helping to, you know, show us how fast we're moving. Well, what is that speedometer like specifically telling us? It's telling us our speed, but what is it telling us our speed in terms of? What does speed actually mean? There's two factors that we as scientists use to determine speed. Okay, these two factors are distance, how much distance we're covering in a given amount of time. Okay, so sometimes you don't see distance, you see the term displacement used instead of distance. Uh, displacement, I'll, show, I'll, I'll explain the difference. All right, don't worry. So, think about this you're looking at the speedometer that maybe your parents are driving, or you're going to be driving soon, or maybe already are driving. I think a lot of you are getting your license soon. Uh, and you look at the speedometer and it tells you that you're going 50 kilometers per hour. So what does kilometers per hour mean? It means that for every hour, you're going to go 50 kilometers, 50 kilometers every hour. So distance is strictly a measure of length. Okay. And in the physics classroom or in the science classroom, we like to use meters or kilometers. Okay. And specifically, if you move on to physics and do physics with uh, me or myself or Mr. Duick or Mr. Fast next year, uh, you will be asked to almost always use length in meters, so M, okay? Sometimes kilometers, uh, but then you can be given length in all sorts of different factors. You can be given it in centimeters, millimeters, uh, you know, decimeters. You can even be given like a, a meter of length could be yards. Or, or feet or miles, right? Those are imperial units. We won't see that as much. Okay? Uh, we like to use metric. Now, what is the difference between distance and displacement? So I've got a video here because uh, I normally will do like an example on the board, but it's a little bit trickier for me to be able to do that right now. So what I want you to do is just, you can pause. Uh, I'll post this video link in the uh, Google Classroom description, and you can click on that as well to watch uh, an explanation, a nice clear explanation of the But really the only thing is, is that displacement is not a measure of length like distance is, it's a measure of the change in the position of an object from its starting point to its end point. The best way that I like to think about this is imagine that you're running the 400 meter race in track. 
and 400 meter. Well, I guess it could be the, the, the 200 as well, but it depends what track you're on. If you're on a 400 meter track, if you run the 400 meter race, you have ran a distance of 400 meters, but your starting position is the exact same as your ending position because you ran in a circle, right? You ran in a circle like this. Okay, so if this was your starting position right here, and you run the whole way around, well, this is actually working pretty well, like this, you're going to end up in the same spot, okay? And what that means is that your displacement is zero. Your displacement is zero, but your distance is 400 meters. So you can see in that example, there's a very drastic difference between the two. Now, watch this video anyways, because it talks about cars going backwards and forwards, and it really helps. So make sure you check that out. All right, what is time? Well, time is, you know, we all know what time is. It's a measure of the interval between events, right? Uh, you could say, you know, there's a year between every birthday, right? Like that's a measure of time. Uh, you could say that you are, I mean, you guys are how old? What are you, 15, 16? So there's been 15 years since the day you were born. That's a measure of time. It's just an interval of time between two different events happening. Now, uh, more commonly, what we'll see in our class is, you know, um, a bike is riding for 15 seconds, right? So that's the interval of time that you would be looking at. Usually we use seconds. Sometimes we use hours. We ne almost never use minutes, okay? But you might see minutes and you have to do a conversion. I'll tell you about conversions soon. Now, in this unit, we use the term velocity. Velocity is just a fancy, for as far as we need uh to understand right now velocity is a, just a different term for speed okay velocity has a direction associated with it and speed doesn't now in grade 10 physics we're not going to get too far into that difference okay? but in grade 11 and 12 physics you most definitely will have to know the difference between velocity and speed. now velocity is the distance something travels during a specific time interval in a specific direction that's the idea so, for example, most highways in Manitoba have a speed limit of 100 kilometers per hour. And then in towns or cities, it's usually half that, 50 kilometers per hour. All explanations of velocity include something we call units. Units are how you measure, uh, you know, you measure a, a value in science, right? So uh, if I'm talking about uh, something's mass, I talk about how many kilograms it weighs. That's the unit of mass, okay? It's just, it's something that can describe how much of something there is, okay? So velocity's unit is kilometers per hour or meters per second. I almost shouldn't even include that part there because we'll never use kilometers per minute. Now, as long as a description of velocity includes the unit of distance and the unit of time, you can always get a fairly good idea of how fast something is going. Okay. Now, I think for us, it, like, it's a lot easier to picture how fast something's going if we talk about it in kilometers per hour, just because we know how fast a car going 50 kilometers per hour, what it looks like, right? We're not as used to meters per second. So we, because of that, it's a little bit easier to kind of visualize kilometers per hour. But in the classroom, this is what we call the SI unit. This is the one that we want to use for the most part. Now, here's your little challenge. Prefixes. What the heck is a prefix? Well, think about me saying kilometers and meters. It's the exact same word, except one of them has something in front of it called a prefix. It has the, the, the prefix kilo in front of it, right? So we've just seen, we talked about this. Now, actually, you know what? This is bad because uh, I will get to this. We'll do this next week. We'll start talking about scientific notation. So right now, you don't know what scientific notation is in our course, at least not. Uh, you might have heard of it before. We'll talk about it. Okay, it's a shorthand method of expressing really large or small numbers. Now, um, I'm actually just realizing right now that maybe we can't do this prefix activity unless you guys know what scientific notation is. Um, oh, you're good. You can do this. Okay, so there's another shorthand method that's used to do virtually the same thing. It's um. So what scientific method, or sorry, the scientific notation does? it makes really large or really small numbers just easier to express. You don't have to write so many zeros, okay? I will explain in our next lesson. But if I'm talking about, you know, four million millimeters, it would be a lot easier for me to be able to say that that would be, um, what would that be? 
4,000 meters. Or even easier, that would be just four kilometers. See how this number is changing from 4 million to 4,000 to four, all because I'm either saying millimeters, meters, or kilometers. So that's just because I'm changing the prefix that I'm using. And what it does is it makes small numbers or really large numbers easier to define, okay? So it requires that we attach a prefix in front of the number. Uh, and I'm gonna explain to you or I'll teach you all of the prefixes. In the Google Classroom, I'll post a document for you to work on. And it has a website that you can go to where you're gonna learn about all of the prefixes. Now there's one in specific that we need to get really good at. And normally in class, I would spend quite a bit of time explaining to you where this 3.6 number comes from. But due to the circumstances that we're in right now, I'm just going to expect you to just know if I ever ask you to go from kilometers per hour to meters per second, you need to divide by 3.6. And if I ever ask you to go from meters per second to kilometers per hour, so if you're ever going back this way, you need to multiply by 3.6. Okay, 3.6 is the magic number. So what I want you to do, I'll show it on the next slide, but you can pause right here, convert the speed of light, convert the jumbo jet, convert the cheetah, the jackfish, the hawk moth, the human and the garden slug. Convert those all from their velocities in kilometers per hour to their velocities in meters per second. So you just go on your calculator, you just divide by 3.6. If you pause now, then now we can move forward to what the actual answers are. 300 million, uh, 253.61, 31.94, 13.89, 14.72, 10.28, and 0 0.014. That is where we will end our notes for today. I just have a realization that I do need to go over scientific notation with you guys. So we will do that in the next lesson. Uh, for now, focus on that little paper that I'm gonna attach on the Google Classroom um, and watching that other YouTube video, as well as obviously how to use the notes. So have a great weekend and I will talk to you guys on Monday.